Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 110. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Kitsune Risu. Yo. Hey, Kitsu, how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm alright. It's been a while. How have you been? I've been okay. Yeah, it has been a while indeed. Um, I've been gone doing a bunch of stuff. But, you know, I'll never forget the days we had. Oh, man, you're unforgettable. That's that's all I have to say. You're unforgettable. <laughs> It's, that's not necessarily good. But, <laughs> I just wish James was here with us today to experience the unforgettable. No, I'm glad that's, that's not a word. Not around, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, sweetie Bell, you have your work cut out for you today. No, I don't. Okay, I, I'll, I'll cut that one. That's not a word. P PG thirteen, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I don't want my like my triumphant return to your show to be marred by. James, James Cork. Uh, no offense to you, James. You're a great guy. I, I just hate you. So. <laughs> Ay, caramba. But anywho, Kitsu, so you, you, it's been a while since you're here. I need to ask you the two important questions. Who is your favorite character? Why do you keep asking me that? Because people who might not know who you are and what you do might want to know who you, you are. You and... ask them to watch the previous episodes, right? Yeah, but it's fun this way. Anyway, tell the people who... It's the same, it's the same freaking answer. Okay, it's it's Twist, okay? It's Twist. Okay, favorite episode. I can't even remember myself. I keep making it up. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I, I still like Sister Who's Social. I think that's what I said before. But if not, it's the one that I like now. Okay, um, nothing from season four? Uh, no, because I have not watched anything from season four yet. What? How? You know it's almost ending, right? Yeah, I know. How could you not? Okay, I, I don't even. If, if I don't James... own a television. Oh, God. If James were here, he's going to bash you up. No, no, no. Anyway, I'm glad. And, and that's exactly why I'm glad he's not around. Ah, uh, yeah, caramba. But anyway, with those two questions out of the way, I think we can proceed. Yeah, right? Yeah, let's go. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next topic. It wasn't the first topic. I don't care. So anyway, next topic is news time. In today's news time, Buck announced second wave of guests. Plus Mike the Microphone, General Mumble, and H-Mage. If you haven't heard, Buck has announced their second wave of guests. The guests are Heather Brackel. Is that how you say it? Br Heather Brackel. Yeah, the br Brakel, Brakel, Brakel. Brakel. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, Heather that wasn't that difficult. Yeah. So, anyway, Heather Brakel, colors for the My Little Pony comics, and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Animated Adventures by IDW. Performing for the second time at the Summer Sun Celebration, our popular brony musician, The Living Tombstone, General Mumble, and also Lavender Harmony and Icky. And if that's not even enough... Buck also announced performing for the first time at the Summer Sun Celebration is the one and only Mike the Microphone, Prince Whatever, and H-Mage. Links can be found in the show notes. So, Kitsu, I know you're not a brony music guy and you're not a congoer, but tell me, if you're going to Buck, would you be excited for this? Well, I think you kind of answered the question for me. Just say I'm, yes! I'm not... No, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna fall victim to your psychological manipulation. Okay, I. For, what, okay, first of all, what's Buck? Because Buck is a convention in the UK. It is the Bronies United Kingdom convention. I know it doesn't make sense if you. No, why? Wait, what? The Bronies United Kingdom convention. No, but that spells. B B yeah, B I know. B B B I know, it doesn't make sense. B but but B let's roll with it. It's going to be held in Manchester. Oh, Manchester. You know, I've, I've been to Manchester. Oh, how is it? No, I, I don't know. I, I have never been there, actually. <laughs> uh, talking about you being in Manchester and not, I'll be going to Buck this year. Oh, you are you? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, Were you invited as a special guest or are you, like, crashing? Knowing Malaysians, we like to invite ourselves. <laughs> All right, crashing it is. <laughs> but honestly, I, I can't wait to go there and have fun with the guests that Bucks has. 
And you know what? It'll be awesome to meet some of the people I interviewed before and getting to meet a few new people that I might be able to interview. Oh, yeah. Like, for example, for example, yeah. Heather Breckel, colorist for the My Little Pony comic and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Animated Adventures by IDW. Yes, indeed. Also, possibly, The Living Tombstone, General Mumble, and also Lavender Harmony and Icky. Right? Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm just... Yay. Wow, this is so scripted. Scripted is I know, right? It's almost as if we're reading off a script somewhere. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, like say before in the show notes. Uh, anyway, you have a good time because like you know, I, I think like people from our neck of the woods uh don't really get to go out that much. Um like I I actually kinda of really, really kinda of wanna Go to. There's another con that's going on right mm-hmm. now, which is uh, Everfree Northwest. Oh, that. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, of course, because it's going to take me like $3,500 just to get there, it's a bit difficult to visit cons. So, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty lucky to be able to actually visit uh, Buck this year. You know, enjoy yourself and bring me back lots of. That's not a word. We'll do, I'm we'll sorry. Do. I'm sorry, sweetie. But bring me back lots of cool stuff. But you know what? I'm gonna try because I'm kind of there for fun and for business. Who knows? We'll see. Look, Mike the microphone is a big name. Like I'm not. I'm not into the the music side of the the fandom much because I'm I'm one of those dirty authors. <laughs> so you know, we hate each other generally and keep to our little mini groups. But uh, even I've heard of Mike the microphone. I'm not too sure who Prince Whatever is. Is that actually his name, Prince Whatever? Um, it's his stage name. Yes. Not 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 whatever. It's whatever. Uh, yes. Uh, I I did. Yes. That is whatever. But it, whatever. Okay. And and H Mitch. I'm not too sure who they are, and I'm sure they're great. But you know, Mike the microphone is a big name right there. Uh, you you should try to spoon him. I'm trying. I'm trying. But it's. It's a situation where I need to be there, then I could get it. But you know what? All I can say for now is I'm just going to have fun when I'm at Buck. Please do. Remember me fondly. Oh, we'll do. I'll bring a picture of you around. Oh, okay. Please don't do that. <laughs> but anywho, let's move on to the next topic. What's next? I, I don't. I have no idea what's coming next because, you know, I don't have a script or anything. <laughs> Yes, the invisible script that I post out to you guys before we start the show. But yeah. that doesn't exist, man. <laughs> yes, indeed. But anyway, um, My Little Investigation is out and playable. Do you remember My Little Investigation? I if do. you don't... Here, I just said I do. Y- you do? Really? Yeah, I do. Well, it's here for the people who don't. If you don't, oh, right. here is a brief introduction to the game. My Little Investigation is a fan-made game inspired by Ace Attorney Investigations' Miles Edgeworth. Ironic, because yeah, it's the worst one of the series. And that's that's another thing uh, for another time. But, yes, yeah. indeed. You play as Twilight Sparkle, who plays the part of a crime-solving investigator in Equestria. Just like in Ace Attorney, the game will be split into chapters and will be progressively harder as the chapter increases. Links to the game can be found in the show notes. I'm, I'm actually very excited about this, because uh, first of all, I am a Big, 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 big fan of the Ace Attorney series in general, right? Or in Japanese, known as Gyakuten Saiban. Yep. <laughs> I'm such a geek. But, um, uh, yeah, like, uh, I, I think I remember, like, originally reading about this. Uh, how long ago was it that they started? Two years ago, maybe? Ages, right? Mm-hmm. And finally, it's, uh, well, at least the first part of it is done, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, here's the thing. I played the game before I um, read up on the news and stuff, and I played it till completion, and it's fun. Uh-huh. It's fun. I, I want to give it a try now. Oh, you, you should, you should. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Since you do play the AC Tony games, right? And you, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming you also played Miles Ledgeworth? Yeah, well, uh, as I mentioned, as I, as I quit earlier, mm-hmm. um, Miles... Yeah, arguably. I, I know someone's going to get angry with me for saying this, but uh, Miles Itchworth Investigations was not... Well, uh, that's not the name, but you know what I mean. Uh, his, his game was not the best of the lot. It was a good 
experiment in like changing up the formula a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. And the sad thing is that I, I understand that the second one, which is uh, Investigations 2, mm-hmm. is a lot better. Oh, but okay. that one never hit, you know, uh, the English-speaking audience uh, shores. Well, Kitsu, that's Capcom. That is Capcom. Yeah. And also, you know, Ace Attorney, uh, the latest one, Ace Attorney 5, was only released digitally. Mm. I did download it, though, because it's awesome. There's and a physical copy, actually. I, I don't think so. No. There is, there is. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. But anyway, Are you sure? Yeah. I'm just going to repeat this until someone gives me... Give me proof. Ay, there- ay, ay. I've been to a game shop. There is. But anywho, in the game, you have assistant or partners in the game where where they give you special abilities. And do they have that in the game? The Edgeworth game? Special abilities? No. I, yeah, like, I, like your partners. I, I certain partners give you certain perks. Like if you're with Rarity, she... She has the ability to sweet talk other characters. No, that's definitely something rather unique to uh, my little investigations. Um, I don't think in any of the games, to my recollection, ha- have your partners ever been actually able to provide anything outside of, you know, like general mechanic stuff, mm. like required stuff. Let's face it, like most of most of your partners in the games are pretty useless. <laughs> yeah. Maya Fey can just die seriously <laughs> i thought she did no she no she didn't she didn't die <laughs> she was my, my, she didn't die. No, no she she just went back she just went back to the the mountains and became a a, a monk shows me what i know mm. but anywho but anywho this this is a fun game you, you should play for all you ac tourney fans it's fun you should try it out you know what i'm gonna play it right now oh god after it's the a, show, please. You, no, you guys, you, you, okay, like, show, show of hands. Who wants me to, like, have a playthrough of the game? Uh, let's play. My Little Investigation, starring Kitsune Risu, the guy who talks too much and doesn't know what anything is. <laughs> and for some reason, still remains a guest on this show. I see none. Maybe later then. <laughs> All right. Uh, but anywho, on to, on to exciting news. Um, mm-hmm. Michael Morones goes home. We got great news regarding Michael Morones. Is it Marones or is it Marones? Marones, Marones. Tomato, tomato. That's thought, really. <laughs> what? All right. Okay, I'm bad with names. But anywho, after a long stay in the hospital, Michael Marones is finally heading home. Michael has been in the hospital for almost four months, and during his stay, he has been recovering steadily. Links can be found in the show notes. So yes, his Twitter page shows a picture of him heading home, and that's awesome. Knowing the backstory of this guy, he's been through a lot. Okay, so let's let's put this into a bit of context because there are going to be some people I think who actually do not know who Michael Marones. Oh, you know what? You you say Marones, I'm going to say Marones, so we get both sides of it. <laughs> yes. Only one of us is wrong. All right, <laughs> so there are going to be people out there who probably don't know who Michael Marones is. Mm-hmm. So let's give a little bit of backstory first. I think. All right. Yeah? In in January of this year. Uh, Michael attempted suicide because he was bullied at school for liking My Little Pony, which is sad. Fortunately for him, his brother Angel saved him or managed to save his life before he moved on. And he was sent to the hospital and it was not pretty. He has suffered brain damage and his um, chances of having a normal life like before is dashed now he's going through rehabilitation and is trying to do his best to live a normal life well let's let's also just get one thing out there um and just to just get a bit serious for a while this this kid is 11 years old Mm -hmm. he's a 11 year old kid who was bullied into attempted suicide now this is not you know not a good thing i know i'm kind of like putting it a bit lightly but this is not a good thing i understand that you understand that i mean both of us we're practically nerds we we both got bullied when we were growing up well some some more than others yeah true true i mean i, I still believe you now you know? <laughs> wow bully back man fight back with psychology yeah fight back you know don't don't stand up for people like me I fight back. 
<laughs> no, but yeah, you know, it's 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 a ser- it's a serious <laughs> thing. Um, so you know, I joke about it. We both joke about it, mm-hmm. but uh, we have both been bullied before. Oh, yeah. Let's get it out there. So, mm-hmm. no stranger. I think everybody has in some at some point in their lives experienced. A little bit of bullying and a, a little bit of biasness, you know, getting picked on, all this oh, kind yeah. of stuff. Everyone has had this before, but to the point where it, oh my God, an 11 year old kid, I, ca- I can't even, I can't even fathom it in my head. It's, it's something so unbelievable, unthinkable. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a foreign idea. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, the, the thing is, the thing is, I, I don't want to say much about how Michael was brought up, what his environment is like. All I know is, offing yourself off is the last thing on anybody's mind. I mean, people who off themselves off usually have a great deal of depression. A great deal of depression. So, you, me, luckily for us, even though we have been bullied when we were younger or even so on, we have... We we are strong in our mindset, but for Maroons and other people, maybe it's too much for them, or maybe the bullying is too much. Who knows? Well, something something happened. That's for sure. Yeah, true, true. Now all we can see is that we have to be strong for them. We need to show them support because no matter what it is, there's always someone there to support you. Yeah, it's a. Uh... You know, it's the little things in life, I think, you know, that, that you really need support. Support mm-hmm. is something that, that's, it, it's a small gesture, but goes a very long way. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? Kit made it. We wish him the best. And, uh, you know, let's let's just give him a personal message. Don't, don't let the bullies affect you. Live the way you want it. Just be cool. That's the best, that's the best advice I can give. Just stay cool, man. And... Uh, never doubt yourself. There's always people who are there to help you. And you know what? You got us. You got the whole world, man. Yep, yep. So anyway, let's move on to other news in the fandom. Right. I wish I positioned the news more better than this. <laughs> but anyway, Hasbro Legal approved posting Don't Mind at Night. Yay! <laughs> a while back, we reported that Jan Animation got a CND letter from Hasbro Legal's department. In the following weeks, they have been approving some of his videos to be posted back up on his YouTube channel. Now, Hasbro Legal Department has approved one of Jen's most popular animation, Don't Mind at Night. As for now, Jen is unable to announce and or explain about his current situation with Hasbro Legal Department. Links can be found in the show notes. So, Kitsu, what do you think about this? So Jan Animation, right? Mm-hmm. They're the guys uh, that he's the guy who did those really, really impressive uh, animations at YouTube. YouTube. I've, I've seen some of them. I think, uh, like I think, like Button Mash. Yeah, yeah. That infamous little character is mm-hmm. uh, mostly due to one of his uh, animations, right? I mm-hmm. think Button Mash uh, and Picture Perfect Pony. Oh yes, that one, classic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Something. Mm-hmm. Yep. The awesome one. <clears throat> so I didn't. I didn't actually know his name was Jen. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure. Was it, was it a, a, a lady? Because Jen seems like it's a, a guy. A it's a guy. It's a guy. Mm-hmm. Is his name Jen? Yeah. Was it just his uh, company? Uh, I, I got no idea. It's he's European, so he has one of those long names that he doesn't even want to post it online. So he just used Jen animation. Well, for if short. he's European, then shouldn't his name be pronounced Jan? It's Jan. But anyway. I'm going to call him Jan. All okay. right. So Jan oh, okay. Animation has yeah. been under attack by Hasbro. Mm-hmm. Well, I wouldn't say by Hasbro. I would say by Hasbro's legal, legal. department. And mm-hmm. I think it's, it's quite important to uh, have a distinction because I don't think that Hasbro's legal department technically works in the same, you know, sort of company as the rest of. The, the you know the rest of, of all the other departments you know mm-hmm. it's like Hasbro higher ups don't seem to know what the hell they're doing all the time uh, and the legal department seems to be acting out of their own will so I'm not sure how connected they are you know the Hasbro in the sense that the left hand is not really sure what the right hand is doing mm-hmm. uh, in fact I do theorize that Hasbro's legal department works 
in a separate universe, <laughs> right? Okay. And in that universe, instead of uh, friendship is magic, they have a show called My Little Pony. Hatred is awesome. Oh God, right? no! And they have made it their entire life to hunt down people who do nice things and destroy them both mentally and possibly physically. So, oh, boys. so what we have here, right, mm-hmm. is that as I understand the story, feel free to correct me uh, okay. when I'm wrong. Um, that Hasbro's legal department sent a lot of cease and desist stuff to uh, Jan or Yan or Yan animation, and they just told him to shut down everything, shut it down, right? Technically, yes. Technically, yes. And um, what is this I hear about Hasbro itself not even really knowing about it? Well, technically, Mike Vogel, the VP for Hasbro Studios, got a lot of tweets from the fandom. And he said to the fans that he'll look into it. Well, that's a, that's a very generic statement, isn't well, it? Well, it's get to kind it. of... If you do think about it, if the VP for Hasbro Studios says he'll look into it, meaning he got no idea what's going on. Because if he is involved in any way, shape or form, he would just blur out a statement where, we know what's going on, this is blah, 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 and all that stuff. If he say he looks into it, that has to be serious. Oh, he's stalling for time. Well, because he doesn't know. If you do think about it, all of Jan's animation got taken down. Mm-hmm. So where is the line between fan work and official stuff? Because most of Jan's work is fan-made. Very professionally made, but yes, yeah. fan-made. So, I mean, but the point is, um, Hasbro legal department may have... A bit too trigger-happy with their uh, mm, cease and desist letters. True, but at a point where they want to play it safe because they don't want fans to be confused. Because, here's the deal, as far as I remember, the music video for Picture Perfect Pony, one of the... I, I think Tabitha St. Germain, who voices Photo Finish, was confused and said this. Did I record this? I don't remember recording this. Wow, this is a fan made. This looks good. That, so, that is pretty amazing. Yeah. So, to a point where people get confused. I do understand why Hasbro wanted to take it down to avoid confusion and stuff. But do I agree with it? Eh, it's their property and it sucks for us fans. But eh, but now at least they're working um, with it and looking at what is okay what is not. Well, legally, they have the right. Let's get that straight. Oh, true, true, Anything true. legal, right? Mm-hmm. They don't... I mean, there's no there's no arguing, mm-hmm. right? So no matter what, word of the law, you know, they, they, they bring down the hammer. That's that. But at the same time, there's also the uh, the other layer of the moral and eth- the, the, the ethical dilemma of, of it all. Mm-hmm. As, as in, you know, these guys are not really... I mean, I, I guess... I guess you could argue in a way they're profiting of it. In a way, right? Kind of. Because, because YouTube does pay people with you know a lot of views and stuff like that. But Only if you turn on monetization to your videos, that's the thing. But that aside, I, I don't really know where the legal boundary with this is. Because Jan is doing his thing. He made it himself from scratch. He, he even live streams the animation. So he has... How do I put this? A better term is show his work. And for Hasbro to tell him to take it down, kind of jerky, but understandable. You know what I mean? Well, you see, at the same time, you can also say that uh, Hasbro is just protecting their interests because I think we all remember the case of Double Rainbow. Uh, I'm going to avoid that one because Double Rainbow was kind of... Uh, they ask for permission and stuff, and I don't hundred percent know the full details. Well, there are you know there are things floating about, but I'm not going to talk about that. You're not going to talk about it. Anyone interested, you go and do your own research, right? Because uh, let's just say that this, regardless of what the truth is, it's still something that made Hasbro a little bit more wary, mm-hmm. right? Now, true, that's true. something that you can't deny. So what's what's happening here is maybe Hasbro is just being a little bit like, oh, you know, all, this kind of stuff is, is just going to happen again. You know, uh, people are just going to do this and do that, do X stuff that we don't like as a mm. company, as a legal department. 
we don't like because we want to get paid, right? So we have to find uh, things to, you know, oh, true, true. we have to persecute I... innocent true, true. animators <laughs> named Jen. But, um, oh, true, true. I do understand. I do understand. The, the thing is here is Hasbro legal department is just taking care of its own interests because the image of the My Little Pony characters are trademarked by Hasbro and you know what? If they don't take care of it, they lose it. It's not the worst thing that they could have taken down though. Yeah, technically it is in the terms of how large scale the fandom is. No, oh, true. Well, fair enough. I'll yeah. give you that one. But anywho, at least Don't Mind at Night, one of Jen's most popular videos is back up. Now all we need to wait for is Picture Perfect Pony. Because once that's up, I think Jen could do almost anything. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, right now we got no idea what Jen can do or cannot do. <laughs> It's the first step in a, a series of good news, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Indeed, indeed. I mean, once once that first crack comes through, right? Mm-hmm. Hopefully, the rest is going to follow because there isn't any way to for you know Hasbro to say, okay, we're going to let you have this one video, but You know, not not all the others because of because reasons, and those reasons are going to be pretty lame, and they're not going to have a very good image after that. And I'm sure this uh, vocal guy, right, mm-hmm. also has a bit of an image to protect. Oh, true, true. I, I won't say anything much about Mike Vogel because he hasn't said anything. To and about he's got a this. cool name. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic, and the next topic is well, we have guest time written here, but. We don't have a guest, so I'm just going to say let's talk. Time. Let's talk about that. What guest? today's guest is no one, <laughs> and he does nothing. But we do have a guest host, and no, that don't. guest host is Kitsune Risu. So Kitsune, no, how are you doing? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm still fine. I'm I'm still as fine as it was from the start of this episode when you already asked me this question. <laughs> so nothing much has actually changed between. Um, Like twenty minutes ago. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But you know what? Um, you're a film fic writer, right? I am. So how is it? Like, do you enjoy doing it? Do I enjoy writing? No, I torture myself daily by posting <laughs> stories. You know, for the past for the past three years. No, I, I yeah, I, I like writing. I'm a writer. You know. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to build up time for me to find other questions. Oh, you did mention that you, <laughs> you did mention that you entered a competition, right, on film fic. Uh, yes, I did actually. Um, recently happened, which is which is actually why I mentioned the Everfree Northwest Con, oh. because uh, just out of a whim, I actually decided to join the Everfree Northwest uh, writing competition. Oh, cool! Right, mm-hmm. uh, and I came in second. Oh, that's cool, man! Congratulations! Thank you. It was fun. It was it was actually it was actually pretty cool. I think there was something like seventy uh, five entries, wow. which is the biggest uh, competition that I've ever joined. Like both in uh, filmfic and quite sadly in real life uh-huh. as well. Um, and although I've won, you know, in both cases for like in filmfic and in real life, I think this one is actually kind of a, a bit of a personal victory. Oh, yeah, really cool. Uh, don't mind me asking, but who got first place? If you know. Oh, I I do know, not off the top of my head, but I can I can find out for you. Okay, so the guy who came in first place was a fic, if I remember, called Broken Gladiator by a Brony Rider, oh. and Brony Rider is actually one of the bigger names in in the writing world uh, of film fiction as well. Uh, he wrote a story uh-huh. about. Uh, it was unique because I think it was the only entry in the whole contest which actually talked about the power ponies, okay. which, as I understand, is a season four thing, and yeah. I don't know about it because I didn't watch season four, uh, and so for that reason, actually, I did not read the story. Ah, uh, right, because okay. I'm saving up my season four stuff for something. Um, I'm not gonna talk about it yet, mm-hmm. but uh. I mean, I know Brony Rider has a certain level of quality, right? All right. So definitely, I'm not at all upset that he won. I think it should be a good pick. Mm-hmm. And I've read other stuff of his before, so he's all right. You know, oh, cool. Um, 
And uh, third place, I just want to pimp it out because I think I read the third place one and I actually liked it a lot. Uh, it, it was uh, called The Revelation of a King by uh, another lesser-known writer called Tidal. Okay. So if you... T-I-D-A-L. So if anyone wants to check them out, you know, why not? They're good stuff. You don't even have to check mine out. I suck. <laughs> oh, man. Right? I don't want to say that. I'm not. I'm... Well, I, I just did, so... <laughs> okay. So oh, that's, that's not a word. <laughs> oh, God, no. Silly, but please edit that. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, Broken Gladiator by Brony Rider came in first place. Third place was The Revelation of a King by Tidal for the Everfree Northwest writing competition this year. Oh, uh, cool. And I was supposed to... They, they said, like, you know, you want to come over to the con and pick up your prize? And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> so I'm actually having it arranged to be sent over from the US. So it's going to fly halfway across the world. I got a cool custom bag and like a patch and a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, so, you know what? Thanks very much, Everfree Northwest. And thanks very much to the judges uh, for picking my... Thingy for the thing, yeah. Oh man, you should definitely go, man. I don't have the money. Do you want to sponsor me? Does anyone want to sponsor me? Uh, I, would, I, would go, I would go. If you, yeah, I'm going to start a Kickstarter. Send my ass to Everfree Northwest, right? You you do that, and I'll make a Kickstopper. <laughs> I I'm. Uh, That's not a word. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, um, that's. That's the most interesting thing that's happened in my life in the last six months. So okay. I'm a very sad person. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You're on this show, so that's good. Right? Right? Not really. Okay. But anywho, uh, is there anything else interesting in Finfic? Well, the stories. Hey, guys, if you like reading, go to Finfic. We have some stories. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, that's the motto of Finfic. We have some stories. <laughs> I, I do that. I, I check it out every night before I go to bed. Oh, do you? Why don't you ever read anything of mine? Because yours is so smart and I'm a bit dumb. Well, that is that is like the most backhanded <laughs> insult I've ever heard. You're, you're just smarter than that. You know? <sighs> James is not it. here. I have to pick up the slack. I hate you. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, moving on. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So uh, I did remember you saying that you have this 50 question thingy. No, I don't have it. It's a thing. I mentioned this to you like some time ago. Mm-hmm. Y- you know memes, right? They yeah, they come and go. So, on on DeviantArt and other art sites and other places, there's always this meme of like questions. You know, ask you questions, answer them, whatever. I both really kind of like them and I really kind of hate them because. I never answer them truthfully. <laughs> they always ask, ask me a lot of stupid personal questions like, where were you born? How old are you? And I never answer them uh, truthfully. Okay. But I kind of like doing them. So that always makes people confused. But uh, there was one that I saw recently, which is actually more about like, what is your thoughts on certain things in My Little Pony hit canon oh. of... My Little Pony. And this actually applies quite a lot to the writers, especially, of course, because writers have, you know, hit, they have very strong hit cannons. They are not, you know, writers are not passive about hit cannon. Like, they, you know, like other people would see something and be like, oh, yeah, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I'm adopting it. Mm -hmm. But writers create. So it's, this is the kind of thing which is kind of interesting to ask writers because a lot of the times, uh, the things that they say is actually stuff that they may have come up with themselves. So you really get to see a lot of the uh, creativity of the community here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, other uh, parts of the fandom aren't creative, like, you know, the musicians, animators, or whatever. But you know what? You guys clearly aren't. So, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, I, I joke. I joke. You guys are, you guys are great. I, I, I somewhat love you. I think what you're trying to say is you're, they're creative in their own way and their own feel of art. Yes, yeah, definitely so. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they are. But there, there is, of course, a lot of overlap. But So uh, so this one I found interesting. This, this 50 questions I found interesting. Um, because they ask questions about, uh, you know, things happening in the show. So I, I, how about I ask you uh, a few of the questions? Or oh, some sure, of them. Or sure, all of them. Uh, they're, they're pretty short. 
Okay. You can probably answer them in like really quick, you know, quick fire kind of things. I uh, doubt it, but still, let's try. Okay. Uh, try not to think so much. All okay. right. So let's we'll start with like the first, uh, the first cluster, I'm going to say, right. which has to do with the princesses. Okay. Okay. Question one. How old are Celestia and Luna? Over a thousand years old. Okay. <laughs> Number two. How old is Cadence? Uh, in her mid twenties, maybe. So why, I mean, okay, this isn't a question, so I'm going to propose to you why is it that, you know, Celestia and Luna uh, are over a thousand. Cadence is, uh, as you say, 20, but they all have such fine asses. <laughs> God. Uh, I'm not going to answer that one with a 10 foot pole, no. Okay, question three. Were Celestia and Luna always alicorns or did they ascend? Huh, that is a good question. Um, I'm, as for, this, for, for the topic right now, I'm just going to say, yes, they have always been alicorns. So the, the the first eloquence they were born eloquence yeah i'm guess i'm going to say that yes yes okay so they they literally are some sort of like god like uh deity maybe kind of thing in your your mind well i mean we can go on to head canons and other stories where they are said... But that's the point of this, isn't it? Yeah, true. I mean, this, this is an interesting story, but let's continue on. I, I like where this is going. Question four. Are Cadence and Twilight immortal? Huh, this is a good one. I'm going to say yes, but Lauren said no, so... No, no, no. This is about your... This is about your canon. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe if you want to listen to uh, Lauren Faust... Yeah. Feel, I mean, feel free, right? That, that, that's what I mean. This is, you know, uh, adoption of mm-hmm. of a canon. Uh, and technically, this should be canon because it's Lauren Faust who said it, although it's been a while since Lauren Faust actually had the word on anything in the show. Oh, true. Right? So, uh, you're going to say yes. Yes. They are. Yes. Or, okay. Uh, have there been other Alicorns in the past? No. Just no? them four. Just, 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 just them four. Just these four guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they they ain't been none other than these four guys. Okay, number six. I don't know why I'm talking like this now, but I'm going to stop. Okay, number six. How much authority do Celestia and Luna have in Equestria? All of them. Unless there's a secret All, all of it. All of it. Yeah. How much authority? All the authority. Yeah, unless there's what? a secret splinter cell group where they yeah. move on their own. So I'm going to say... Oh. Should it, that, that's going... <laughs> Question seven. Does Shining Armor rule the crystal empire alongside of cadence yes he handles it because in the micro no in the comic uh, it shows him doing so okay so comic canon yep. which is clearly established as not congruent with actual show canon yeah, maybe and who knows you see this is interesting because you prefer that over i prefer you know, logic really because you prefer logic <laughs> yeah i mean anything to to me um, comic canon is comic canon and show canon is show canon. And sometimes there's head canon, but head canon is shot down by comic canon and comic canon is shot down by show canon. Not, not always. I mean, it's yeah. it's interesting that you say that because like for for, for the most, um, people have been ignoring quite a lot of things in in comic canon, sometimes in show canon. Like, uh, you know, the whole the whole joke about Twilight's mom oh, yeah, that. being uh, the writer of the Daring Do mm-hmm. books, and that clash instantly with the uh, sure. with the show. Yeah, yeah, true. But that's in, what, in that's... an episode which I should not know about because I have not yeah. watched. Yeah, but that's what I said when uh, hit canon is shot down by comic canon, and comic canon is shot down by show canon. So there's a tier of uh, oh, but we in the hit canon crowd. Mm-hmm. Sometimes willfully choose to ignore that. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that's wrong. I sometimes do that too. But you know what? I'm logic, uh, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm avoiding fights with the show <laughs> because whatever the show says goes. I, I don't want to much, be. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to be that one person who shows my fan fiction diagram to Katie Cook. Well, why not? She's she's writing fan fiction just as much as we are. But she's getting right. paid, and Hasbro's okay is it. That is shy. <laughs> Question eight. Other than Twilight, Luna, and Cadence, what relationships have been important to Celestia in her lifetime? Hmm. Students, close friends, lovers, family. Who? Uh, family always comes first, but she did banish Luna to the moon. So I'm going to say friendship because that's her whole shtick for the last thousand years. So friends over family and... That's- Word? My sister. That's, uh, <laughs> I would say that, but 
I, I think she holds friendship dearly and she loves her country and nation. Well, she did send her student to Ponyville to learn friendship, which mm. is like the worst subject ever. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? So, uh, I never passed that one okay. in school. I'm, I never took it in school. I dropped out. <laughs> that's why I have no friends. Okay, so basically, yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's uh, 50 questions in a lot of different interesting categories. And, um, I mean, if you're interested in doing the rest, you know, just check out check out questions. I can pass you the questions. Oh, cool. I, I, I'll just say it'll be in the show notes. And you know what? I have to say it's interesting because... This questionnaire kind of deal. It's more in depth than what's your birthday? What's your favorite color? This is your pony, and you do this with yeah, your pony. It makes, it makes you think. Yeah, you yeah. know, speaking of that, I really hate those guys who always ask you, Who's your favorite pony? You know, every single time you come on their show. Because I don't get why, you know, it's like you should be asking nice questions like, how old is Cadence? Right? Relevance and they'll say like, much? 20. And then you can move on. Ay, ay, ay. But talking about moving on, let's move on with this show. Ay, caramba. Why are you channeling James Cork? I've been hanging out with him a bit too long. But anywho, uh, let's, uh, next topic is shout out. And my shout out goes to you, Kitsu. Thanks for being on, man. You're, you've yeah, been cool. awesome. Thanks, man. It's, it's always fun to be on the show mm-hmm. sometimes oh god <laughs> trust me come on you love you love being on the show like I love you being on the show I am a whore yes <laughs> that's true uh, sweetie boy's gonna have a field day with this and Kitsu um, shout out you have any to give out to yeah I'm gonna shout out to James Cork <laughs> why because he's an awesome guy and he couldn't join us today <laughs> also Rarity sucks man <laughs> Hey, James, shout out to you. <laughs> I'll be sure to let him know that. <laughs> so join, join us next time, James. You know, I, I miss you yeah. and your soothing beard. <laughs> he has a beard? I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mvsshow at gmail.com. If you'd like to email us personally, emails are in the show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetiebot will interact with you, talk about editing the show, and... She'll censor you. Oh, yes, that is also... There's that too. And there's me. I'm at Norma Sanzo. You can tweet me, and I'll respond with pictures of kitty cats, food, and whatever I'm interested in at the moment. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebook page. I have been Roman Sanzo. And I have been Kitsune Risu. And we'll see you next week with a lot more awesomeness. Anywho, Kitsu, play us out. Okay, here we go. When I was just a filly, I found it rather silly. To see how many other ponies I could meet I had my books to read Didn't know that I would ever need Other ponies to make my life complete But there was one cult that I cared for I knew he would be there for me My big brother Best friend forever Like two peas in a pod We did everything together He taught me how to fly a kite We never had a single fight We shared our hopes We shared our dreams I miss him more than I realize it seems your big brother, best friend forever. Like two peas in a pod, you did everything together. And though he's oh so far away, 
I hope that he would stay My big brother best friend